Hey everyone, how's it going? So, I hinted this after the Scyther video, but yes, we're gonna try and beat Red and Blue with Pinsir. And while Scyther has some advantages over Pinsir, overall I think it's pretty clear Pinsir is going to be the better Pokemon. Why? Well, first off, Pinsir actually has better stats. Scyther's base stat total is only 420, while Pinsir's is 430, and also the distribution's a little bit better. You see, Pinsir gets a little bit more in attack, and while it loses some in speed, it's fast enough that it should be able to outspeed pretty much everything, maybe other than Sabrina's psychic Pokemon. The biggest advantage it has over Scyther, however, is its move pool. Pinsir actually learns non-normal moves and gets Body Slam, all of which will be super useful. It also gets Scyther's useful moves like Swords Dance, albeit it learns it a lot later. The one big disadvantage Pinsir faces is that it's not subscribed to J-Rose 11. Now, uh, it's that as we fast forward to the Brock battle, Pinsir only knows one move. That's the same as Scyther, and its move is better, Vice Grip. But by having lower base speed, it does have a lower critical hit chance. But more importantly, as we are obviously going to lose this first battle, however, we do much better than we did with Scyther in Scyther's first battle. But getting back to the point I was making, I'm going to start leveling up in the forest. And unfortunately, Pinsir is part of the slow level up group, as opposed to Scyther, which was part of medium fast. And that means it's going to take Pinsir far, far longer to level up, which won't just be bad against Brock, but could be a problem going forward as Pinsir will be underleveled. I battle Brock again at level 13, and the big thing here is that when I get a critical hit, I'm doing like a quarter of Geodude's HP. I don't get them as much as Scyther, but they're doing a ton of damage. Additionally, because my defense is so high, Tackle is only doing between 4 and 5 damage, and I make it to Onyx with 32 HP. Now, because I only have Vice Grip, I need to be careful with Bide, and by be careful, I mean get lucky. Now, this battle looks like I'm going to lose. In fact, after this next tackle, I'm going to be down to 2 HP, and Brock uses Bide, but I get a clutch critical hit, and I'm able to beat Brock at just level 13. I mean, I know I level up in level 14 now, but the battle was won at level 13. Way better than Scyther did, and that is due to Pinsir's better defense, better attack, and better move in Vice Grip. But before you get the wrong idea that this run is going to be just a complete joke, let's fast forward to Misty. Vice Grip's not quite doing half the star you, and thankfully it goes for tackle not just once, but twice. So I'm at 48 HP heading to star me. Looking good, right? Unfortunately, Water Gun's doing a ton. Vice Grip is going to be a 5 hit KO. It's doing too much damage. I've lost. So Pinsir, while powerful, does have some limits. And I'm actually going to level up a little bit more heading to Rival 2 because I'm a little bit worried about Pidgeotto outspeeding me in Sand Attack. It's a pretty common problem. Thankfully, at level 18, I outspeed Pidgeotto. Vice Grip's doing about a third. It uses Gust, does decent damage. Then it uses Quick Attack, meaning I'm going to knock it out without Sand Attack. Vice Grip is going to one-shot both Abra and Rattata. And while Charmander can go for Ember, it does just attack randomly and it went for Scratch. Vice Grip was a 2 KO, easy Rival 2 victory, and now that we've defeated Rival 2, we can proceed up Nugget Bridge and level up a whole bunch more. We're not going to learn or get any moves that are going to help us, but hopefully with the additional levels, Vice Grip's going to do enough that Misty shouldn't be a problem. Now I'm at level 21, and you can see Vice Grip is doing way over half. In fact, it's doing like 75%. Staryu goes for Water Gun, but I'm at 57 HP headed to Starmie. Now, Starmie outspeeds and goes for Tackle. It uses the next defend. It gets a crit with Tackle, but thankfully, it is just going for Tackle and not Bubble Beam. Had it gone for Bubble Beam, maybe this could have been a loss. That X defend definitely made the battle a little trickier. I'm just going to call it even and say, we beat Misty first time at level 21. If Misty was really annoying, I could have theoretically skipped her, but it would save a ton of time to beat her now as we did before we head to Vermilion City so we can beat Lieutenant Surge because in order to use Cut, you need the Cascade Bad from Misty. Speaking of Cut, before we get that, 
we are going to pick up Body Slam. Not having Body Slam was terrible for Scyther. We either had to rely on only critical hits or base 60 power Swift. Having a base 85 power move that can paralyze everything that isn't normal type is a really, really good thing to have. And in order to demonstrate that, let's go battle Rival 3. Unfortunately, Body Slam doesn't quite one-shot Pidgeotto, but it goes for Gus, so we can knock it out in two hits. It does one-shot Raticate. I level up, I outspeed and one-shot Kadabra, and even though Charmeleon both uses Ember and gets a critical hit, we have more than enough HP to knock out the Charmeleon and to make it past Rival 3. So, with what just happened, you might anticipate Surge would be a joke. And you'd be right. We're gonna one-shot Voltorb with Body Slam, albeit the critical hit mattered. We're gonna one-shot Pikachu. Raichu outspeeds and goes for Thundershock. It gets a crit with Thundershock, but thankfully it didn't go for Thunderbolt. Maybe there's a reality in which Surge could win, but that reality was not what we got. And we can move on. The one thing I do want to mention here, because I don't normally mention this, I wasn't able to catch a Paris because Pinsir is so powerful, it would one-shot the Paris, and throwing Pokeballs at Paris is a bit of a nightmare. So I went with the Geodude Farfetch team, something I've only done once before. Almost always, it's Paris for Dig and Cut, and then Pidgey and Spearow for Fly, and then Lapras for Surf and Strength. Having to mix up what Pokemon I used was actually really annoying, and I didn't know when else I would mention this, but it is somewhat relevant to the run, because if Pinsir just had a little bit less attack, we wouldn't one-shot Paris. So, annoying, not the end of the world. And speaking of annoying, but not the end of the world, we have the Hiker in Rock Tunnel, the Geodude, the Graveler, they use Self-Destruct. Seismic Toss does two-shot Geodude, but unfortunately, they just keep using Self-Destruct. I just had to try again and again until they don't use self-destruct. Thankfully, with Seismic Toss, it really isn't that big a deal. I believe it took three or four tries to do it, especially because Graveler was a three a KO. It is kind of funny to me that this trainer was actually easier with Scyther. You'd expect Scyther to be far worse, but for a variety of reasons, I just had an easier time. Nonetheless, irritating, not the end of the world, and we're going to make our way to Celadon. Just like with Scyther, I decide to go battle Erica. I use Body Slam, Victory Bell uses Poison Powder, but here's where something goes wrong. Body Slam isn't a 2 a KO, so Victory Bell can spam Wrap. Well, not spam, it only has to use it once, and now Wrap plus Poison, plus Erica's actually able to heal while this is happening. This is one of the cheapest things I've ever seen. And while I had a chance to maybe win if I got a critical hit versus Vileplume, I'm at only 10 HP, I use Body Slam, it only does like a third, and Vileplume knocks me out with Petal Dance. Now there is a way around this, basically I don't know if that critical hit mattered, but Victory Bell can be a 2 a KO, I probably should have just done this later, but if we knock out Victory Bell in just 2 hits, we do have enough HP to take the Petal Dance, and we can beat Erica fairly easily. The reason I'm kind of saying this matter-of-factly, is that I really should have anticipated Erica being tricky. I didn't anticipate Body Slam doing as little as it did. And so, if I had just done this a little later, Erica would have been an easy first try victory. There really was no reason to battle Erica first. And I'm a little disappointed in my planning, but it doesn't really cost me too much, because although the battle took slightly longer in in-game time, this is a big reason I save and reset in front of gym leaders, so it doesn't impact it too, too much. And that's another reason I don't use real time. I'd prefer the silly mistakes I make not really be counted for or against in the tier list. Anyway, after defeating Erica, we can go and battle Giovanni. And although Giovanni was a little tough for Scyther, against Pinsir, it's a different story. I go for Seismic Toss, Onyx misses with Rock Throw, I knock it out. I'm actually poisoned. Ryorn is a 3 KO, but Horn Attack doesn't do very much. And against Kangaskhan, I can just go for Body Slam. It is a 3 KO, but Comet Punch doesn't do too much. Like I said earlier, Pinsir has amazing base 100 in defense, so not too bad, even while Poison, easy victory. And we can move on to, eventually, Lavender Town and Rival 4. At this point, I'm kinda overleveled, so we will one-shot Pidgeotto with Body Slam. We don't one-shot Execute, but thankfully it misses, so we knock it out in two hits. We don't one-shot Gyarados, but even a critical hit Bite only does 20 HP. 
we outspeed and one-shot Kadabra, and we outspeed and one-shot Charmeleon, leveling up to level 32. And that's important, because unlike last time where we had to rely on Bide in order to defeat the Ghost Pokemon in Pokemon Tower, Pinsir knows Seismic Toss, and thus is able to hit Ghost Pokemon. I know that's weird. In Generation 1 only, set damage moves like Seismic Toss ignore all type effectiveness and even type immunity. So that's good for us, because Seismic Toss is far easier to use than Bide, relies on a lot less luck, and makes this part of the game totally trivial. But before I skip ahead, against Ghost Marowak, just because I knew it couldn't do much, I actually use Guillotine. Now, one KO moves have changed over the years, but in Generation 1, they are simple. They have 30% accuracy no matter what, but you can only hit with a 1 KO move if you are faster than the opponent. And when I say faster, I don't mean in terms of base speed, which is what critical hits are based on, your actual current speed, including if you use a move like agility, that's all that matters. If you go first, Guillotine has the chance to hit, and it has a 30% chance at that. I mention it because as we skip ahead to Koga, there are always people who question why I don't use moves like Horn Drill, Fissure, etc. Coughing was a 3 KO, and yes, Guillotine would be useful. In fact, I use it against Muck and against Coughing number 2. But now, I missed three consecutive times to Weezing, and even though it kind of cooperated, I wasn't able to knock it out. So it's just simply too unreliable to be a strategy I want to use. I mean, look what would happen if I just went for Guillotine. So, oh, we do hit against Coughing number one. That's pretty cool. Oh, we hit against Muck. It's not bad. <laughs> okay, uh, we hit against Coughing number two, but surely... <laughs> <laughs> no way. I was, okay. I was going to use this as an example why we shouldn't use guillotine. How is that even possible? If my math is right, that is about a 1 in 125 chance of happening. So not totally absurd, but pretty crazy and probably as a result of some Gen 1 RNG manipulation I don't even know I'm doing. So anyway, obviously I have to reset that. That's not how I'm going to go defeat Koga. I show off what my actual strategy was. I'm going to use Body Slam against Coughing. Hope for the 2 a KO. I don't get it. It goes for Sludge. So this is looking like a reset. Although against Muck, I get a crit. But there's Sludge. Oh, <laughs> another Gen 1 quirk. The famous Gen 1 miss. So I'm able to knock out Muck. Coughing, I don't get the crit. But I do get the 2 a KO. And then, once I get to Weezing, I plan to just keep spamming Guillotine until it works. It didn't take five times to hit, but based on my math, I think it's only about a one in five chance that all five Guillotines should miss. And to be honest, having a one in five chance of losing against a gym leader I'm weak to is perfectly fine by me. And truth be told, I had a backup plan that you will see in just a second, because after we defeated Koga, we can go battle rival Fievel. I kind of anticipated this going badly, so I picked up the TM for Swords Dance that's located on the 7th floor. I use one Swords Dance, and it's not quite enough to knock out Pidgeot, so I'm at half HP. It's also not quite enough to knock out Execute, but the rival goes for a Potion, and I'm able to knock it out. It's also not quite enough to knock out Gyarados, but it goes for Bite, and it seems like everything's going to be okay if I can one-shot Charizard. I do outspeed Alakazam, I was worried about that, and that's a one-shot, but it doesn't one-shot Charizard, so all I'm going to need to do is use Swords Dance twice, and now, assuming I don't get a critical hit, I should one-shot each and every of the rival Fievel's Pokemon. Thankfully, in the very next battle, that is exactly what happens. It's not actually all that likely I don't get a single critical hit, but to be quite honest, other than Pidgeot, the only one I was really worried about was Charizard, and we're able to make it past Rival Fievel without using any of our rare candies, which is super, super great. Now that Pinsir has Swords Dance, it's a little unstoppable. We can spam it versus Giovanni number two, and I don't want to use the third one after I get poisoned, but we one-shot the next two Pokemon. Rhyhorn's a two-hit KO, but we're going to one-shot Nidoqueen. And so I think you can see what the strategy is going to be for the most part going forward. Try to set up Swords Dance, Rely on the fact that 85 base speed is still way above average, especially with the fact that we have stat experience 
which modifies our stats in a positive way, our opponents don't, and then try to sweep through each and every team. I think that will work versus Sabrina, the one question is, can we set up Swords Dance? Well, it doesn't in my first battle, but that was because I forgot to heal. And thus, I didn't have enough power points. I only had two left for Body Slam, even though I actually used a power point up. It's not super important to show the battle, and normally I would just skip a battle where I made a mistake. But there is something important that I learned here, which is that after I got to Alakazam, it outsped me with only one Swords Dance. And due to the fact that Generation 1 is broken, that's actually something I can easily fix. You see, instead of setting up one Swords Dance, I can set up two, assuming Kadabra doesn't use Psychic and lower my special, so now I have to knock it out. But Mr. Mime only has Confusion, so I'm gonna go for that second Swords Dance. It goes for Barrier, we knock out Mr. Mime, and... Oh god, now we level up. So I noticed that Alakazam outsped me, but not the fact they level up in the middle of the battle. So I'm gonna knock out Venomoth and Alakazam... Oh. I guess it could have gone for Psy Wave as well and we still won, but what I was trying to do is the badge boost glitch. I've talked about it a bunch, but essentially every time I use Swords Dance, there is an unintended side effect that my speed now goes up since I have Koga's Gym Badge. So I was going to use that to my advantage. Even though I technically did not need more attack, it would boost my speed as well, which is pretty useful. However, that glitch effect is cancelled when I level up. So I could have just battled another trainer in Sabrina's gym to make sure I don't level up in the middle of battle, but that went well enough. So we can head from a gym leader I wasn't too worried about to one I am worried about in Blaine, since Blaine is the fire type gym leader and oh yeah, I'm a bug Pokemon. Hard to remember that considering I never use bug moves. I'm going to try to set up all three swords dance against Growlithe. Thankfully we get a retroactive super potion, a second retroactive super potion, and then Ember, so if I don't get a crit, I win. I knock out Growlithe, the crit didn't actually matter. I knock out Ponyta, the crit didn't matter. I get a third consecutive crit, but I also get a paralysis and it doesn't move. I got everything I possibly could got. And now if I don't get a crit, I win. Four consecutive crits. I hate when this happens. I guess because I got four consecutive guillotines, I can't be mad. But wouldn't you believe this is actually half as likely as four consecutive guillotines. Anyway, this time around, I do get a couple embers, including a critical hit. I get a critical hit against Growlithe. I get a critical hit against Ponyta. I don't get a critical hit against Rapidash. And I don't get a critical hit against Arcanine. Okay, so not getting critical hits would seem to be the play here. Some of you asked in my last run, why don't use focus energy? But that just takes it from, in this case, 16% to 4% and it wastes a move slot. If I had infinite move slots, sure, I could use focus energy. But with only four, I need to be really picky about what moves I actually have. And focus energy for that niche use case, which also is a glitch, doesn't seem worthwhile almost ever. At least not yet. Anyway, now we can battle Giovanni for the third time and you will be stunned by what strategy I use. Against Rhyhorn, I set up, you got it, three Swords Dance, I get Guard Spec, Stomp, and another Stomp. I don't quite one-shot Rhyhorn, but it's not a big deal. I actually go for Seismic Toss, but that takes two hits. I then can knock out Dugtrio, Nido Queen. I level up, but I'm not really going for any glitches here. Nido King, I get the crit versus Rhydon, but it can't really do anything to me. And I decide to be funny and go for Guillotine because it likes to spam Horn Drill. And eventually I hit with Guillotine. I actually think about the fact that Pinsir might be able to learn Fissure. I look at the move list and realize, oh wait, it can't. I have yet to use Fissure in a run. It would be cool to look back through these videos and see if I use pretty much every single move in the entire game. There are some I think I just won't use for a variety of reasons. And so far, even though I get Fissure in every run, I've yet to use it. But with all that being said, I don't think it will be too useful against Rival 6. I might be underleveled, but I still think I'm going to win on my first try. I outspeed and go for Swords Dance. Pidgeot will always go for Wing Attack. It's doing about 30 damage. I set up all three. I'm at half HP, and unfortunately I get the critical hit. Pidgeot gets the critical hit, so that first try victory does not happen. This time around, we're able to set up the Swords Dance. Wing Attack still doing a bunch of damage. 
Once again, I get a critical hit, but this time Pidgeot doesn't, so I can knock it out at 26 HP. Rhyhorn's a 2 hit KO, but it goes for Tail Whip and fails. I also can learn Harden, which would up my defense and increase some badge boost, so I'll get rid of Guillotine. Not really planning on using that. I can knock out Execute in one hit. I can knock out Gyarados in one hit. But unfortunately, since I leveled up, I don't outspeed Alakazam, and it knocks me out. So that's something I'm going to need to work around. I actually got really bad luck, so this took like five attempts, but I just go for Body Slam against Pidgeot to try and conserve some HP, and now I'm going to set up versus Rhyhorn instead. Rhyhorn doesn't do as much damage, but I'm still at about 40 HP heading to the rest of the team, assuming I can knock this thing out. Okay, there we go. 45 HP. So now I'm going to learn Harden. I've already used all my Sword Stance, but I can use Harden against Execute, which will always go for Poison Powder turn 1, and turn 2, it always goes for Solar Beam. Now, I got two critical hits here, and I got hit by Solar Beam and lost, which sucked. But this time I don't. I don't get a critical hit against Gyarados, and you can see I'm able to outspeed and one-shot Alakazam due to the two badge boosts from Harden, and we don't crit against Charizard, so while I don't have a ton of HP to spare, the spam Swords Dance and Sweep strategy is still working. And don't forget, I still have all my rare candies left, and I'm able to use them whenever I want. Probably before Loralee, because let's face it, I don't think Pinsir is going to do super well. Before I battle Loralee, I should answer some questions. Why not get Submission? It's a fighting move, it will be super effective. The answer to that would be the Scyther run with Double Edge. Recoil is just way too much and ends up resulting in more losses than victories. Plus, unlike Double Edge, Submission is only base 80 power and has only 80% chance to hit. So even though it's super effective, I would much rather rely on the far more reliable Body Slam. But that's enough talking about what I'm going to do. Let's show how it all works in practice. I go for Body Slam right off the bat, and I can see I forgot to heal, which is bad, but let's see how this battle goes anyway. I haven't used the rare candies. Dugong rests as I anticipate, so I can set up two more Swords Dance. I then go for Body Slam again. It doesn't knock out Dugong, which isn't good, and at this point, I've pretty much decided I'm going to use the rare candies. Loralee heals upon waking up. I then go for the final Swords Dance, Dugong goes for Takedown, and I knock out Dugong, but I'm not going to knock out Cloyster in one hit. It goes for Super Potion, so that's fine. I'm running out of Power Points, I don't knock out Slowbro, I then get a critical hit. I can knock it out with Seismic Toss, I can knock out Jinx, but now I level up, Lapras goes for Body Slam, Confuse Ray, and I actually KO myself by hitting myself in Confusion. So, yeah, I forgot to heal. That's my bad. I don't usually use a full restore, but because I was poisoned, I needed to because I didn't want to go back to the center. And since I was at full HP, I thought I did that. That's on me. But I'm going to use rare candies. I want to one-shot everything. And it seems like a pretty good point to do that. All right, so now I'm 11 levels higher, and I actually out-level the Dugong. I go for Swords Dance. It goes for Rest. And then finally, on the third one, it goes for Takedown. But I think that's it. I one-shot Dugong, I one-shot even Cloyster with its massive defense, I get a critical hit against the Slowbro, it gets a critical hit against me, which is surprising because it's very slow, I thankfully knock out Jinx, crits wouldn't matter, and I don't get a crit against Lapras, and so with the rare candies, Loralee goes from tough to an absolute joke, assuming I don't get an inopportune critical hit, and now you know what's coming next. This strategy has worked against everyone. It's of course going to work against Bruno. Even though Onyx does have Rock Throw, it's so, so weak and Rock Throw misses so much that once we battle Bruno, we're just going to set up three Swords Dance and sweep through the entire team with Body Slam. So as I do this battle, let's talk about what we're going to do against Agatha because it's kind of interesting. Remember with Scyther, Agatha was the major sticking point, and it was due to the fact Scyther had to mimic Nightshade, and both mimicking and then using Nightshade took up many, many turns. Turns where Agatha could confuse us, use Nightshade, put us to sleep, Dream Eater, all that fun stuff. 
With Pinsir, we still have Seismic Toss, so we don't need to mimic Nightshade, but we can mimic Hypnosis. And the reason Hypnosis will work is even though it's only 60%, if it hits, that pretty much guarantees us to knock out Agatha's Pokemon. I don't want to use it against Haunter because I think that should be a 2 hit KO, but I'm not sure. But I do want to use it against the first two Gengar. Hopefully we'll knock out each of Agatha's Pokemon. I'm not entirely sure. But now that we've defeated Bruno, we've talked about what we want to do. Let's go ahead and see if it works. All right, first things first, we're going to mimic Hypnosis. Gengar does the best possible thing and goes for Dream Eater, which fails. We then go for Hypnosis, but miss, thankfully, another Dream Eater. Then we hit with Hypnosis. Gengar stays asleep. Seismic Toss is going to be a 3 KO, but Agatha actually swaps into Golbat. I can use Body Slam, and Agatha swaps back into Gengar. This means I need at least one Sword Stance to one-shot the Golbat, and that I'm not too worried about Gengar, so I'm going to use that Sword Stance. I'll use a second one. That'll help me outspeed the final Gengar. Thankfully, Gengar doesn't wake up. It cooperates, and we knock it out. Golbat comes out next. We go for Body Slam, easy knockout. As I mentioned earlier, I go for Seismic Toss, but unfortunately, Haunter is going to be a 3 KO, and there it is. It hits with Hypnosis. As I'm sleeping, it hits with Nightshade. I'm still sleeping, and there's Dream Eater. All right, we lost. Oh, maybe not. We woke up, and just in the nick of time, because that Dream Eater would have knocked me out, but... Haunter did restore some HP, so that's really bad. It's still going to be a 2 KO, so I'm going to go for Seismic Toss. Thankfully, it goes for Dream Eater, and we knock out the Haunter. We will knock out Arbok, even if we get a critical hit, so that's not a problem. And we have 67 HP, which is just enough for one Nightshade from the final Gengar. It all comes down to hitting with Hypnosis, which we do. Gengar stays asleep. Seismic Toss 1, it stays asleep, and we win. Even if it wakes up after Seismic Toss 2, Pokemon don't attack the turn they wake up. And so, we are able to get past Agatha on our very first attempt and make it to Lance. Lance could also be very tricky. I don't quite know what exactly I can do other than just spamming Swords Dance, but Lance's Pokemon have, well, Gyarados has Hydro Bump and Hyper Beam. Don't want to see those moves. Don't want critical hits. Not much else I can do. Let's try to defeat Lance. Turn one, I go for Swords Dance, and there's Hyper Beam, but no crit, and it didn't do much damage. Plus, Swords Dance actually boosted my defense, so not a bad play. I then set up a second Swords Dance because Gyarados has to recharge, and so long as I don't get a critical hit, we knock out Gyarados. That's one down. Next comes out Dragonair. We knock it out even with the crit. That's great. Two down. That means we don't have to worry against the next Dragonair, but Aerodactyl resists Body Slam, and it survives. It goes for Supersonic, but misses. We level up, and will we knock out Dragonite on just two Swords Dance? We don't. Thankfully, Dragonite goes for Agility, and then Lance outspeeds, but heals, and we knock it out, so it was a range. Definitely, if we have to do this again, I will use three Swords Dance, I can set up against Dragonair if I have to, but I don't think this will be necessary. I think we've done it. I think the strategy we have now, it's worked well against Rival 6. Alakazam comes out second, so he won't level up in the middle of the battle. We got this, guys. We just need not terrible critical hit luck, and we will first try the Elite Four with Rare Candies. That's not bad. Let's do it. All right, Champion leads with Pidgeot. I go for Swords Dance, and I didn't want to see Mirror Move. Now Pidgeot has gained a bunch of attack, and I do just want to knock it out before it attacks me. Unfortunately, one Swords Dance isn't enough to do that. It hits me with Wing Attack, which does pretty decent damage, but we are able to knock it out. Now is the moment of truth. Do we outspeed Alakazam? We do. I think we have this, guys. That was the one question mark I had. I didn't want to set up a second sword stance just in case. Because now, against Rhydon, we can easily set up another sword stance. Horn Drill misses. A third sword stance. Fury attack just wastes some time. Body Slam now does half. Tail Whip doesn't matter. Critical hit. All right, that kind of sucks. But we knock it out. We're at basically half HP. And if we don't get any more crits, we win. Next comes Executor. We hit. We one-shot. 
There we go. Gyarados is the second to last Pokemon. We hit. We don't crit. It's all up to Charizard. We all oh, crit. It goes for Fire Spin and not only hits, but crits. It wouldn't have mattered. That's really, really annoying. So, so close for this to be a first try victory, but unfortunately, we're just going to have to try again. And it kind of sucks. That's kind of been the tale of this run, to be completely honest with you guys, as I battled the Elite Four again. We've had some pretty good strategies. Pinsir is really good. We've just gotten some pretty awful luck. And it's unfortunate that critical hits work the way they do. It would be nice if critical hits were just an extra bonus, not a punishment. But to be honest, it's the one thing that kind of balances this game a little bit. It doesn't allow me to just spam moves like Sword Dance with Pokemon like Pinsir, because there always is that risk I'll get the critical hit and I need to work around that. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, we're just about to obliterate Bruno and make it back to Agatha. Turn one, I go to Mimic Hypnosis, and of course, Gengar puts me to sleep. I stay asleep, and it goes for Dream Eater. But thankfully, I do wake up, so Dream Eater misses, but I'm at only 48 HP. I then miss with Hypnosis, and there's Nightshade. That went super, super well. I am so looking forward to doing this a bunch of times. To be fair, however, this run has actually gone pretty smoothly, even with all the bad luck I've gotten. And thinking back, I've gotten a lot of bad luck in this run. Just so many inopportune critical hits. I mean, think about it. One non-critical hit. An 80% chance, an 84% chance. And this would have been over. Short video, I know. But now, there's a bit of a question whether we got Lucky versus Lance. How long is it going to take versus Agatha? Am I going to need to level up like I did with Scyther? And don't forget, because Pinsir is in the slow level up group, it's going to take way longer. And just talking about the tier list for a second, this is where Pokemon really separate themselves. Some of them might take one or two attempts to get through the Elite Four, but don't need any further leveling up, and some, without extreme luck, simply cannot. Unfortunately, due to Brock, Pinsir is not going to be top top tier, but it's so far doing pretty solidly with a time of just over four hours. But we've now made it back to Agatha, and let's hope this goes okay. I'm gonna go Mimic Hypnosis, and Gengar goes for Nightshade. Not great, but at least I'm not asleep. I miss with Hypnosis, and again Nightshade. So now, I will be knocked out. Actually, I don't think I will, because I'll level up, but it's not good. A third consecutive miss with Hypnosis, and now I'm confused. All right, this is over. Thankfully, I fight through the confusion. I put Gengar to sleep, and of course it wakes up on the very first turn. Well, I snap out of confusion. Gengar is asleep, and it actually is staying asleep. I decide to be greedy and go for Swords Dance while one-shot Golbat. Gengar stays asleep. I go for Seismic Toss. Gengar stays asleep, so I am going to knock out Gengar. Agatha can use a Super Potion, but even if Gengar wakes up, it doesn't matter. I actually am able to sneak in a second Sword Dance, but like I said, Gengar wakes up, but it can't attack. I knock it out. That is one down. Next comes out Golbat. Body Slam will easily one-shot. Two down. Maybe I should put on to the sleep, but I'm going to go for Seismic Toss, and there's Nightshade. So one more hit. I'm done. Another Seismic Toss. Obviously, Hunter's going to survive, and Dream Eater misses. So there's a small chance this works out. We're going to one-shot Arbok with Body Slam, and now it's all up to Hypnosis. If we can hit, we will win, I think. We hit. Gengar's asleep. Stays asleep. Look at that. We ended up getting past Agatha on our third attempt. And now we just can't mess up versus Lance. No inopportune critical hits versus the champion. Let's do this. Come on. Just like last time, I'm going to lead with Swords Dance. Just like last time, Gyarados goes for Hyper Beam and no critical hit. Just like last time, I'll go for a second Swords Dance while Gyarados recovers. But this time, I get a critical hit, so Gyarados can use Dragon Rage. I then use Body Slam and knock it out, but I'm only at 74 HP. I'm going to set up, like I said, against Dragonair number one. It goes for Slam, and of course it crits. 21 HP, but as we saw, critical hits don't matter, so we're going to knock out Dragonair number one, and we're going to knock out Dragonair number two. Now let's hope we one-shot Aerodactyl. No critical hit. Oh, no. No. <laughs> okay. All right. We have one HP left. I think if we don't get a critical hit, we win. 
We just won. It was 4 HP due to the level up, but oh my goodness. All right, I think if we lose, we might have to level up a little bit because that was a little inconsistent. Although, we did get a little unlucky with the critical hit to Gyarados, the Dragon Rage, but yeah. Let's hope we don't have to do that. We know what we have to do against the champion. Please just win. I don't want to have to face Agatha again, let alone Lance. All right, let's do it. Just like before, turn one, I'm going to go for Swords Dance, and just like before, turn one, Pidgeot goes for essentially Swords Dance, but Mirror Move. Turn two, I go for Body Slam, can't paralyze, can't knock it out, Pidgeot goes for Sky Attack. We are going to knock it out at full HP. It doesn't really matter because Charizard can one-shot me, but that's still kind of cool. We already know we outspeed Alakazam, we one-shot Alakazam, two down. I set up Swords Dance, Rhydon goes for Leer, that's fine. I set up my third Swords Dance, Rhydon goes for Horn Drill, which doesn't do anything. I go for Body Slam, it does just over half. Fury Attack misses. Assuming no crit, we knock out Rhydon, three down. Still full HP. I'm gonna use Body Slam, no crit, one KO, four down. Next is Gyarados, no crit, yes no crit. And it all comes down to Charizard. Come on, come on, yes, all right. Third try was a charm, at least with the rare candies. Not bad, not bad at all. Pinsir manages to beat the game under level 60, which isn't super common. And as we get a look at the time, it was four hours, 21 minutes of in-game time. So the tier list is getting hard to see because it's over 50 entries long. So I've broken it down into all the fully evolved or Pokemon that don't evolve. And if we look at that list, where exactly should Pinsir fit in? Very clearly in the third tier, the tier that has Dragonite. And after thinking about it, I'm going to put Pinsir at 16th overall. And funny enough, because all the 15 previous Pokemon are fully evolved Pokemon as well, that means Pinsir will rank 16th in the overall tier list. It was close between Pinsir and Ghastly, but Pinsir struggled a lot more versus Brock. And because of how unreasonably long it can take to get past Brock, I always give the tiebreaker to the Pokemon that had a bit of a harder time with Brock. That also means Pinsir is the highest ranked bug Pokemon. We still have Venomoth and Butterfree and Parasect to go, but there is a solid chance Pinsir might be number one. Who knows? Only one way to find out. And eventually every single Pokemon will appear on this tier list. It's gonna be pretty fun. And I'm gonna go get back to work. Take care, everyone.